Hey guys, Rich from Rich Me Gaming. Hope everyone is doing fantastically well. We're going to be doing another unboxing video today, but this time we're taking a look at the brand new expansion, Spreading War, from the Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth Miniatures game. Now, this is a really, really cool game. It's sort of a dungeon crawler esque RPG game. Um, there's no dice involved in it, we just use cards, so it's a little bit unique in that side. And one of the things I really liked about this game. Uh, and I got into it over lockdown was that because the uh, enemy is completely AI controlled, um, so the Dungeon Master, if you like, uh, is an app that you run, you can run on your PC, laptop, uh, iPad sort of thing. Um, so you can actually play this game uh, solo and it's exactly the same game and it's exactly the same experience. Um, so it's a really, really cool game. Now, stick around to the end of the video because somebody accidentally ordered two of these boxes. So I've decided that as a special one-off, we're going to be giving away one of these boxes to one lucky viewer. So make sure you hang around to the end of the video to find out how you can grab a brand new expansion. So let's jump over to the other camera and take a look at what's in the box. So here we go, guys. This is the brand new expansion. Literally just turned up today. Uh, so Little of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth, Spreading War expansion and it brings us some fantastic new characters, some new campaigns. And we can see here, War Comes to Rohan and Gondor. Now, for those of you who haven't played this before, it uses a mixture of uh, Tolkien-created characters, uh, some, some firm favorites in there, uh, but then also some brand new characters for the game as well. So let's have a look at what we get inside the box. Uh, it is from Fantasy Flight Games. Uh, and it's distributed obviously by Asmodee. We've got the rule book here. Uh, so I'm sure there's going to be some new rules that are introduced, which there usually is as part of the expansions. It's a really, really easy, simple game to get into. Everything's uh, very self-explanatory. So we've got some new um, board pieces here. So the way that you uh, play a game of this is every single time it builds you a completely unique map. So each of the map pieces, the sort of these hexagonal tiles, um, each of them are numbered. And then if you look around the back, there is a flip side as well. Uh, and I believe for the first time, we've actually got um, some kind of indoor uh, type, type of setups. Um, we've had these sort of dungeons in the past, or caves and dwellings and things, but I believe we've got some different types of buildings as well here, which, uh, yeah, look really, really cool. Also looks like we've got some terrain pieces as well. So you do get 2D terrain with this. So, um, yeah, looks like they've introduced some new terrain pieces there as well. So we've got the miniatures here. So let's take these out and have a look at who we've got. Now, there's two different types of miniatures. There are the forces of good and the forces of evil. So you can only play as the good characters in this game. There is no option to play as, uh, as the evil side of it, which uh, I think it would be nice to see in the future um, an ability to do that. I'm not even sure what they are. They look like they're wyverns or, or something like that. But one of the things that I was really, really excited about um, is these brand new siege towers uh, that look super super cool and I believe not those ones but I believe a standard miniature can actually go on the top of these and I think there's some gameplay on there as well. We've also then got a mummer kill or if you are a, uh, a hobbit you will know them as an oliphant. So I'll put these to the side here and it looks like there we go. So anyone that's played Marvel Crisis Protocol knows always check underneath the flaps because there's always going to be some extra pieces in there as well. We're going to put these to one side for the moment. They're the heroes. Um, but let's have a look through and see what we have got here. So these are some brand new warg riders which look really, really cool. Now we have had wags in the game before. So here's a wag from the original uh, original box. And then there is, um, I forget the name of it, but there is a, a sort of uh, a leader of the wags as well. So they look super cool. Pop them there. And see what else we have got 
in here. So, these are like some really, really nicely detailed orcs. Um, so let's see how many of these we get. One, two, three, four, five. Usually you get six. Yeah, there we go. Oh no, did we get six? Yeah, there we go. So you usually get six of the main type of um, main type of enemies, and then these look like they could be like Harads or Easterlings or something like that. Um, so yeah, I'll have to have a take another look at those and see what they are. But again, you get six of these. Now the way it works is the app will uh, tell you what each of they are, each of them are. Um, <clears throat> so these can change their stats and things whilst they're in the game. They can be heroic ones, they can be normal ones. Um, but it also, you know, it always knows to make sure that uh, you uh, you don't you, you're not using any more than what you get in the in the box. So on to our heroes then. So let's start then with some that are more well known. Um, so we've got Boromir. So here is his character card. And you can see that each character has um, five different sets of uh, stats. So Might, Wisdom, Agility, Spirit and Wit. And we use these for doing things called tests. So every time you want to do something in this game, um, you have to take a test. And depending on what kind of weapon it is you're using or, you know, if you're trying to climb a tree, it might make you use your agility. Or um, if you're trying to outsmart your opponent, you'll have to use your wit, so on and so forth. Um, and we can see at the back here, we get a little bit of blurb around him. And then it says uh, that this uh, suggested start is the Soldier Rule, which is a brand new rule for um, Lord of the Rings. Um, every character at the beginning of the game, you choose which rule you want them to take. And that then determines which cards and things that they get to bring with them as well. Um, and you can see there that the sword, horn and plate armour uh, are what uh, you are suggested to start with as well. So let's take a quick look at his miniature and it's the one that we could see on the front of the box. So yeah, look, super good. Um, for a size comparison, um, they're about, but let me grab, so this is Aragorn uh, from the Games Workshop game and then this is Boromir. So I would say that they're, you know, they're 32 mil size, I would say. Um, so they're, they're, you know, a little bit bigger, which for me anyway, I think makes them a little bit easier to paint. It means that they've got some more detail on them. Um, so he's the, he's the first of our new heroes that we've got. So the second of our characters that is from the actual uh, book, so a real character from Tolkien, is Dwalin. Uh, so once again, we've got all the different stats on here. Uh, we've also got one thing I didn't mention is we've got uh, fear and uh, damage on there as well. Now fear and damage, let me just, there we go. Uh, fear and damage, basically two different ways of, um, of, of basically dying in the game or being, or being killed in the game. And if you reach a certain number of these, you have to take a, a test. And if you pass the test, you get to carry on. If not, um, you've got to uh, end end the game. So we've got the Lawkeeper role and then Spear and Cloak. Uh, so another brand new role. Uh, I think every character is going to have a, a new role. And then we can see his miniature here. Uh, and again, you know, you look at the detail that they're able to get on these miniatures because they are slightly bigger. And for single piece miniatures, they are so, so good. Uh, let me just show you one. Yeah, so this is uh, his counterpart, shall we say. So you've got Gimli here, so Gimli's from the original expansion. Um, but you can see the level of detail that you've got on here is super, super good. So for anyone who is interested in you know, painting them up, um, they are some really nice. And the last one then is a character <coughs> from the game and they're bringing in a brand new type of character because this character has two separate cards. And what's interesting is his first card is Bjorn and then his second card is the Great Bear. Um, so there's gonna be some mechanics that let him switch from one 
to the other. It's the first time we've had it in this game. Everybody else has just had a single card. We can see here that he's got the guide. He's going to bring a battle axe and travel garb with him. And then mandated equipment. So again, we've not seen this before, but he's got rending claws and heavy coat. Um, Oh, sorry, hairy coat, hoary coat even. There we go. Helps if you read. So yeah, so I, I, I'm gathering then if we look here, yeah, he's got five for might. So that's more might than we've seen for any one character, but he's only got three in his normal form. So again, because there's two characters here, there's two miniatures to represent them. So that is Bjorn in his human form. So he's still a fairly, uh, you know, he's still a fairly tall man. Uh, he's sort of, you know, a little bit taller than... Uh, than Boromir there, uh, but that is him in his bear form. Now, I think I'd have liked to, to have seen it slightly bigger. I think they could have gone a little bit bigger with this, but super, super excited to get these two painted up and start a new campaign with them. Now, I mentioned that there's always some characters uh, who are not, or were not made up by Tolkien and made up with our guys that, uh, that made the game. So the first one is uh, Freyhild. Now, if we look here, she's a female human by the looks of it. And her background is she's a shield maiden of Rohan. So I'm thinking that this is going to be her character. So it looks really, really cool. Uh, we've not had any, um, I don't believe we've had any characters from Rohan before. Uh, I'd have to go back and double check. But yeah, that's really, really cool. And again, we've got a shield maiden role. So that's a brand new brand new role and then the starting uh, gear is spear shield and padded armor now for anyone that hasn't played this all of the starting gear and the rules and everything anyone can do anything so even though it said to here that you know she needs to start as a shield maiden um, you can actually use any of the cards from any of the other expansions as well on the core box so any character can be any role and you can actually switch roles from uh, campaign to campaign because sometimes you don't need uh, a certain role. Another new addition is Calaminth Tuck. So obviously this is a, another Hobbit. Every character also has a unique ability down on the bottom there as well. She is going to be the Provisioner role. So sounds like probably a, a support class and then Mace and Cloak. Um, and as well as being able to do different roles you can also um, play as uh, or, or take any of the uh, armour and uh, gear with you as well so any character can take any weapons but different weapons have to use different abilities uh, or different statistics to be able to wield them and obviously the, the better the statistic in that one particular one the more chance of success that you've got so reminds me of a little bit of like you know a, a sort of a Sackville baggins -esque character there but uh, yeah that's pretty uh, pretty cool and then lastly then because where would a lot of the rings game be if we didn't have an elf being represented and this time we have Renarin. So again, she's got her unique ability. And um, we also get this uh, thing here called Inspiration. So these are tokens that you can get for doing various things in the game. Um, and they allow you to potentially change the results of some cards, so to make them from fails to successes. Um, we can see here that we've uh, got a little bit of background on her and she is the trickster role. So with short bow and padded armor as well. And we can see her character here. So uh, this is the other elf that I have painted up so far. I've got two elves at the moment because uh, I still haven't uh, painted up uh, the, the first expansion. So she's quite a bit smaller than, uh, than Legolas. This is Legolas for anyone wondering. So she's quite a bit smaller. Um, but again, really, really looking forward to getting to play with some of these new characters. So I mentioned that we don't use dice in this game. Uh, instead, we use cards. So every character starts with all of their gear that they can take. Uh, some are two-handed, some are one-handed. So you can see here, oops, there we go. So we can see here that uh, that's denoted. This is the, rend the rending claws that we have to take on, uh, on Bjorn. Uh, so that's a two-hander, which means that you can't carry anything else. Um, but if we look here, we've got Hope's Beacon, which looks like an upgraded banner, uh, which means that we can uh, we can carry something else as well. So we could maybe hold a, a sword or something. Um, 
here we've got Worms 2. So this game looks like an upgraded card. Uh, typically, um, with the cards, you'll get um, a, a starting card that is just, you know, it's called Spear or Sword. And then as you progress throughout the various campaigns, you will find other items basically that are better. And if we look in the top corner here, you can see this. So if we then look at a character card, we can see that to wield this weapon, we're going to be using wit. And uh, Renera, for example, has a wit four, which means that she would draw four cards uh, to see how many successes she got. And then we can see here with the number of successes, which are these, it gives you a number of hits with pierce or hits with smite, uh, which is, uh, yeah, really, really cool. So each character starts the game with a deck of cards, and this is what they draw from. Uh, now these deck of cards are split into three different things. So first of all, you've got your character specific cards. So you always get five of these, uh, and these are the ones, uh, again, for, uh, for an Arian. and if we were to then follow the advice on here and play her as the trickster we would start the game with the first three trickster cards so these have all got certain abilities on them uh, we then take one weakness card which doesn't actually do anything it's just always a always a fail and then as we progress throughout the game as we gain experience we then have an additional, I think it's eight cards, eight or nine cards that we can pick up from as well. And each one of these uh, does something different, gives you a new ability uh, that you can potentially draw out. Uh, and they all cost varying amounts of experience that you gain throughout the campaign. So there we go, guys. That is everything that you get in the new uh, Journeys in Middle-Earth, Lord of the Rings game, the Spreading War expansion. I'm really, really looking forward to playing a game of this. Um, I played it both uh, IRL, but I also play it on TTS as well. So it may be that we actually uh, run some games with the community. So if anyone's interested in starting a campaign, just reach out and let me know. Now, I did mention that uh, we were going to be doing a giveaway. And as you can see... I've got another one of these. It's still in the box because I didn't see the point of taking it out. Uh, but I've got another one of these boxes. Uh, and all you need to do to be in with a chance to win uh, to win this Spreading War expansion is make sure you subscribe to the channel, make sure you've left a like, and make sure you leave a comment down on this video. I'm going to be setting a cutoff for the end of October, so 31st-ish or the beginning of November. Um, I will be pulling all of the names from everyone who has subscribed and left a message on this and this video only, and then I will pull a name at random, and that one lucky individual will win themselves a brand new copy of the Spreading War expansion. Now, for those of you who are finding me for the first time, uh, you'll probably see from the channel that I cover a lot of other games, but mainly Marvel Crisis Protocol. And one of the things that I am doing at the end of October is a 27-ish our streamathon where I'm going to be playing 18 games back to back against 18 opponents from around the globe starting at 8pm that's UK time on the 28th of October it's in aid of candlelight as charity and uh, there's a just giving page set up uh, so if you can go make donations every pound dollar euro makes a big big difference um, or if you just want to turn up on the evening or the whole day uh, and uh, watch one or two of the games it would be really appreciated because any money that we make from a month of October on the channel all of the monetization money is going to be donated directly to candle lighters as well so even just by turning up and watching the you know those pre-video or mid-video ads means that you're going to be contributing to that great cause as well as always guys it leaves me with just enough time to say stay well keep safe and until next time bye for now